Also, we talked earlier about the canvas holding stages and that it's very similar to Analyst's Notebook. Well, that's no coincidence because it, this comes from both ideas, in fact, come from what's called the Entity Relationship Model. And it's really the foundation of relational databases. As you can read here, it says it's used to design relational databases by removing all existing redundancy. This is actually a section about redundancy, but it's essentially the core of relational databases, an ER system, an ERM system. The basic object of the ER model is an entity. So that is some real world object, an employee. And for example, and each entity has several attributes, which are properties of the entity and therefore describe it, like the first name of the employee, the last name of the employee, the employee ID, all of those are attributes or properties. And based on its type, an attribute can be either atomic or it can be multi-valued or composite. So an atomic attribute is always represented by a single value, so employee ID. Um, and multi-valued could have one or more values for a particular entity. Uh, location as the attribute of an entity called enterprise would be multi-valued because each enterprise can have more, uh, one or more locations. There's a separate thing called composite. and we're going to be using some of this actually uh, soon. Composite attributes are not atomic because they are assembled using some other atomic attributes. A typical example is a compo of a composite attribute is a person's address which is composed of multiple properties such as or attributes such as a city, a state, and a street. This, sorry it's a little fuzzy, but this is a pretty useful way to think about it. In database design, you have a compound key. A compound key is a what's called a set of super keys that is not minimal. So if you're not familiar with this, it's actually not that hard, although it sounds somewhat complicated. A super key is a column or set of columns that uniquely identifies a row within a table, is what the rest of that says. And if you take an example like employees, employee ID, first name, surname, uh, maybe salary, possible super keys would be employee ID, employee ID and first name, employee ID, first name and surname and salary. Now the reason for this that, well first of all, employee ID is a, these are all super keys, but this one, employee ID, is the minimal super key because it's the least amount, it's the, it, it's the least amount of information that you need to uniquely identify that row. You could easily have two Johns, you could easily have two Smiths, you could have two people with the same salary, but you can only have one employee ID and that makes it a super key. This is all these are super keys, but this one is the minimal super key. So what this is saying is that when you have a compound key, you have uh, what's called a set. Well, this is a mathematical set. The, the notation we were just looking at with brackets. So a compound key is a set of super keys that is not minimal. So in other words, you have this employee ID and first name because that is not minimal, whereas you know that one is. So that would be a compound key. Whereas a composite key is a set that contains a compound key and at least one attribute that is not a super key. So I won't go through all this. You can pause the video here if you like. This is from Wikipedia and you can read a bit more about it. In practice, compound keys are what we'll you know, m work mostly with.